guys. So I have just received, where's the sticker? A Washburn N4 Mahogany. I was able to find this on Reverb from a very reputable seller. Um, where to start? For a long time, I have loved the N4. Uh, I had an N4 way back in 2003 or four, and I had it for a while, and I guess it just kind of, I don't know, I had the, the Paduke, or however you say it, and it was fine, I didn't love it. I think it was one of the, um, Swamp Ash models that had been stained with the deep color. So it just wasn't, it wasn't what I had expected. I found this as I was looking for some more stuff on N4 as a reverb. Obviously I've been an extreme fan since the 90s. Been a big Nuno fan for quite some time. And obviously with the new song that came out, I kind of got bit by the bug, as I'm sure most people have. So as I was looking for just a regular old N4, I saw a bunch of special editions, what have you. And I came across this mahogany version. And it just kind of spoke to me a little bit more than the standard N4. So, before I open this up, which the case is a little bit dirty, not a huge deal, uh, I was told that this is coming directly from Washburn's factory or the warehouse in uh, Mississippi, or Jam Industries, obviously there's a whole lot of stuff on the internet. Washburn is not what it used to be, unfortunately, and I'm not 100% sure where most of the N4s get built, but uh, I was told by the seller that this was created by a shop called Larry V Guitars. So I guess we'll see if there's any documentation inside. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on with them at the moment, uh, but I found this. So we're gonna see this in real time. So let's take a look. All right, quick little camera change. As you can see, it's a little bit dirty from being in the factory, not a huge deal, I'll clean this up. So here is the first look at this Washburn N4 Mahogany. Whoa. I will say, right off the bat, this is beautiful. Ebony fretboard, obviously the maple neck, Stevens extended cutaway that most everybody knows about. Nice mahogany body. The uh, Bill Lawrence L500, the Seymour Duncan, the N4, the gold hardware. The only thing that I don't love, especially at this price point, um, the retail on this I think was around $24, $25.99 which is a hefty tag. Um, but as you can see down here, we have a Floyd Rose special. I'm not super mad at it, but I feel like for the, the price of the guitar, it should at least be a 1000 series on the uh, brand new Charvel Phil Scrosso. I just got it's a 1000 series. Let's take a look at this. Here's the back. This is, you can see that it says trim stop engage. So I'm, I'm assuming that's a little trim stopper to stop the floating. There's a solid maple neck, no bird's eye, which is fine. Up, 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 up. Now again, what I was told is that because this was created by Larry V Guitars and possibly not the same luthier shop that's making the rest of the USA N4s, there is no serial number or 
made in the USA stamp. But that being said, let's take a look at what's in here. All right, so we have trim bar, uh, Allen key, and the key for the case. So much like there's a gentleman on YouTube, his name is Marco, uh, has mentioned that Washburn as a company isn't great. Uh, for the amount of money that these things are, um, the fact that that's all that's in there is a little disheartening. So now time to string it up with some fresh strings. Probably set the action. That's probably, yeah, that's not going to work for me or anybody else. Uh, and then we'll see how it sounds. So we'll catch up with you guys soon. What's up, guys? I'm back. So that was a fun little unboxing we got to experience together. Um, I've had this guitar for almost a week now. So once it was unpacked, I had to clean it up a little bit. Not sure how long this thing has been sitting in the uh, Jam Industries or Washburn International warehouse, but I had to clean it up a little bit, condition the fretboard, give it some hydration, change the strings, tune it up. And I got to say, for the most part, this is one of the best feeling guitars that I currently have at the moment. I have um, two Fender Jim Roots, the Strat and the Tele. I have a Charvel Pro Mod San Dimas, and I have a uh, EVH Wolfgang. So for those of you who probably already know, again, this is the Washburn N4, the Nuno Betancourt Signature model. They've been making this guitar for almost 30 years, and if anyone's watching this, you kind of already know. You know, you've had Washburn, you've had, you've had the Davies. Uh, I don't need to go into any of that stuff right now. It's more about this guitar right here. And I know for the last few years, they've had what's called the Washburn N4 Authentic, which I believe is uh, has the N4 sticker down here, has one of the EVHD tunas, on the guitar also. And then they have the uh, vintage, which is more just a regular kind of semi-aged. And then they have the, I believe it's the 4N, which is supposed to replicate closely what he's been playing for almost almost those 30 years, kind of modeled, modeled after one of the original um, Davies guitars made in Seattle. Over the years, they've made a bunch of different like one-offs and whatever. And I think a few years during uh, lockdown, they had made, uh, a walnut version that was slated for the Japanese market only and because of the travel restrictions I guess apparently uh, some of those models some of the the produced guitars stayed here some made it over there um, and this is a, a mahogany version which I really kind of liked I was looking at um, the vintage for the most part and this kind of caught my eye I got a, a um, an offer from a seller on Reverb XYZ Guitars, if you want to check him out. He's an um, authorized retailer. And he gave me an offer, and I asked if he would meet me somewhere in the middle based on a couple other offers I had on other N4s, and he said, yeah. So what I really like about this is it just got a nice, classy look to it. You know, the mahogany is a nice, nice-looking piece of wood. The grain is great. I really dig the uh, gold hardware you know, the bridge, the, uh, the volume knob and the switch, the screws, and obviously the, um, the headstock, it's got kind of a gold reflective Washburn logo and the, the tuners. Um, the only thing that's slightly perplexing about this guitar to me is that he told me it was a one-off done by this company called Larravee Guitars, which I think is mostly known for acoustics. So, if you were to look at this guitar on the back, there's no made in the USA stamp or serial number. And apparently he's working on getting me some more information on that, possibly some documentation, just something to have. So, um, you know, the N4 has been a great guitar for years. I don't know if any of you are, have had them before. I've had the N24, which is the Indonesian model. And then I also had an, a Swamp Ash Paduk Stain back in, 2005 and it just wasn't what I expected it to be um, probably the actual opposite of this so if you're again if you're watching this you know it's got the Stevens extended cutaway back here uh, what I like about this is there's a 
uh, a trim stopper, actually a little Allen screw back here that you just have to tighten up and I have the, the trim block so you can't pull it up. You can only dive bomb and you can change that as you want. Uh, the Seymour Duncan 59 and this has a Bill Lawrence USA L500 XL. I do have a Bill and Becky uh, Wild L500 XL on order that I will be um, replacing this with. I've done some research. Some people say it's night and day. One person said they didn't really notice too much of a difference. So I'm going to hedge my bets and go on most people who have done this swap out who really, really like it. This is a good pickup. Um, definitely sounds different than the EMGs and the, some of the other passives I have. And it definitely has that very distinct tone that if you listen to any of Extreme's recordings, you already know about. Let's do a quick little playthrough here. We'll do some clean tones first, but chances are if you're playing clean on... If you have this guitar, if you're interested in this guitar, um, the clean sound isn't necessarily what you're looking for. But we're going to do uh, no effects with the clean, and then we're going to dress it up with some, some chorus and delay. So here's just the, uh, the bridge pickup. <laughs> probably mic this up and, and give you guys the full like Pro Tools recorded treatment but I kind of want you to hear how it sounds in the room I know it's not maybe the best representation but at the same time it kind of lets you hear how it sounds in the room because not everyone's going to be recording not everyone's going to be doing this and that you know we have a lot of bedroom players who watch so here we go <laughs> through uh, an EVH 5153 stealth lunch box at 15 watt. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
to it this was really me just fucking around some shit was okay some stuff was pretty sloppy but i think you all get the idea <laughs> light it sets up great um the pickups i think are an acquired taste uh the seymour duncan the 59 and neck is actually really really great it's super versatile clearly you can hear what it does uh the bridge pickup if you know what these guitars are you know what they're supposed to do chances are you're gonna dig it um you know it's it can get nice and open the chords <laughs> And clearly the pinch harmonics are great. Uh, the cons. Washburn is a weird company, right? So they closed down the, um, the custom shop, I think, in 2014. So we're going on almost 10 years of them being made elsewhere. As I understand it, there's a small shop in Ohio, and the name escapes me. Uh, but I think that's the place that's been manufacturing the N4s uh, for Washburn or under the Washburn name. Uh, as I said, this was a one-off from Larry V Guitar, so I'm not sure if they're looking to outsource some more, perhaps increase production, not sure. Um, came with a hard case, as you saw in the unboxing in the beginning. Now, I didn't pay full retail, but full retail is, I want to say, $24.99. That's a hefty chunk of change for most people, even people who are used to paying the premium price for a USA or a higher-end uh, import guitar. That's up to you to figure out if, if it's worth it or not. But the thing for me is that when I'm looking to spend my money and I get something new, I kind of like it to be an experience. You know, I, I, I get the box, I open it up. And when you open up the case, the case is fine. It's nothing fancy or super special. You know, you open up the little pocket in the case and it's the trem arm, the Allen wrench, and the keys for the case there's no i didn't get a warranty card any kind of registration info i didn't get um a little pamphlet from washburn saying anything you know the n4s 
a guitar with a fair amount of history, it wouldn't be terrible just to add anything, get something. I just put in some effort. You know, for that price point, I really feel it's a little bit of a, you know, snub your nose to the customers. You know, when I got the Fender Jim Root USA, you know, you open the case, which the case for those things is beautiful. Got the crushed red velvet interior. You know, you open the case, you get a strap, a cable, strap locks. Uh, you get a certificate of authenticity. Uh, you get a polishing cloth. And you get a little brochure of like how to properly care for the nitrocellulose finish. You know, stuff that you, do you need it? No, but for what you're paying, it's part of the experience. It makes you feel like the company producing the guitar cares about their customer. And maybe it's going to make you repeat customer in the future. You know, these are things you guys need to figure out if you want to spend the money. But to that point, I've got the Fender um, Jim Root Strat and Telly. And... You know, the Charvel was great. That's under the Fender umbrella. And the Wolfgang's great. I'd also be under the Fender umbrella. So as much as I really like this guitar currently, I really wish um, Washburn as a whole was able to do a little bit more. And granted, they're a company that's been very, very strange the last few years. So I don't know how much I can really fault them. But again, where you guys want to spend your dollars, it's up to you. So... I know this was real, like, kind of grungy and, and messy. Um, but I just wanted to get this done, get it out there, because there's not that much stuff floating around on YouTube for the uh, N4 outside of some of the Davy stories. And I know uh, this guy Marco from the Vatican has done a bunch of really, really great videos and some, some really great history in there. So if you guys want to know more, please check out the Vatican's. Probably if you just uh, searched on YouTube, the Vatican's N4, all his videos would come up. And, and they're all really great. So um, if you guys have any questions, obviously just leave them down below in the comments. I always, I always answer when stuff comes in. And uh, until next time, I still have to do, I wanna do a review on my new ESP Thinline Acoustic, and I'd like to do a quick little review on the, um, on the Phil Scrosso uh, Charvel Pro Mod Sandy myself. Until next time, guys.